gonna go ahead and call us to order. Uh, we do have a quorum. Uh, the meeting purpose, the ends report, hopefully a vote, and just a review of our ends, which Linda, thank you for including that in the packet um, to just get our brains working. Um, I wanna thank everyone for rolling with the rescheduling of this meeting um, for the events. That's really great, and I'm glad we can all be here. Um, the first thing we will do is public comment. Uh, I'm going to read our preamble, because who knows, as I'm reading, someone might have a comment. Uh, the board welcomes comments, but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to by the chair. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can express agreement with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. Hi, Katya. Hi. Good. We've just uh, read over the public comment preamble. And uh, unfortunately, well, yeah, you know, unfortunately, neutrally. Um, I don't think we have any comments, so I'm going to go ahead and slowly say we'll move on. Okay. Um, the uh, written communication to the public. Is there another packet yep. somewhere? Down there, yeah. Um, Chelsea, you and I met with Ben. What's this? Yeah. Um, and uh, had a great conversation yeah. with him and with each other. And um, we, we sent out the letter to the whole board. Yes. I don't know if anyone has changes they want to make. No, I love it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was great. I meant to print it for everyone. and. <laughs> Not I have one copy if anyone It's not in the packet, no. Uh, okay. I can pull it up and, and read it out loud if anyone needs me to do that. That's simple enough. That would be really wordy. Okay. There's, a, there's a poor message, I think, so a lot of, but it's, it's hard to be in a position of like, judging someone else's work and saying, it can get to the point where, like, yeah. you did the work and I'm here judging it and that feels not great but it helps yeah well i will say he seems very very open to i mean he calls this a very much preliminary first draft um so he's definitely expecting feedback and we were going to send this out in the before the next school year right i can't remember when we talked about sending it out did we have a date set or did we talk about it i thought it wasn't yet like we have time it sounded like the letter was to sort of wrap up the end of this year. The end of this year. I couldn't remember if it was that or if it was before the next year. Um, I don't know that we have had firmed it. I agree. It kind of reads as it kind of wraps up some summarizes this year. Although it could also be spun as a. This is where we're moving the, into the transitioning new, into the new right. year. I, the yeah. one comment I have about the letter actually is just the specific bringing up of conflicts that we've been through. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like identifying three, I, of course, the rock is just the one thing that comes up for me right now, but um, I'm not sure it's necessary to identify specific ones. I would agree with you on that. Maybe that can fix some of the wordiness. Um, but not to move away from Megan's question, which is <laughs> what do we, how do people feel about the timing do we do of it? such a communication? Well, do we have to vote on it or do we just do we just all say it's good to go? 
Because if, if it's something that can go out soon and we want it to go out soon, obviously we want to wrap up the year with it soon, but we, our right. next meeting wouldn't be until July, right? Because we're, we're doing a July meeting. I think well, we, we, we talked about it maybe well, yeah we talked about it so I'm just saying like if we have to wait until August I didn't remember what what we were doing you're gonna need a special meeting in July which we'll talk about okay uh, and the reason being is that when the legislature passed the laws around school safety there are two critical policies that have to be voted in the first three the night. Okay. The second read has to be done before August first. So that might help in the discussion that you have. It yeah, it may be that we go back with some comments that we can continue talking about, have another what we'll call final to bring to the July special meeting. I do think we should vote on it. I would, I would agree because it's a board communication. Mm -hmm. right? I think it's our voice. Our one voice. Mm -hmm. so we all agree this communication. Do you guys want to go through it and edit, maybe send your edits to me and then I can send them to Ben? The mm -hmm. thing about Ben is he's, his last day is the end of June. Mm -hmm. So That's that right. would have to be next week at that point. Does he go in the document? How is this going to be something that we're going to be in? I don't know. How is it going to be right now? Um, he'll build as we talked along. about that a bit uh, gotcha. he'll build in the meeting in terms of dissemination. So he'll build through this. Because we want it to reach um, farther than the parents. Yeah. So is it to, because Luke 54 has like a five to six month time frame well yeah then it probably is too much for that so um i'm open to whatever whatever everybody wants to do uh to solve the front porch forum issue we can just introduce the letter and then link to the landing page at osd or something great mm -hmm. um, good idea which ben yeah. can help us with yeah right i agree i think we should do we should go back to it and uh, is your mic on that I don't. Oh, I don't have not logged into that. I'm just on the letter. Gotcha. So if we just do our edits in the next week, get them back to Ben, and then we should get ownership of that document wherever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. We'll have draft two. Sure. Right. So Rachel, if you want to look through it and just figure out what you'd like to delete and such and send it back and we can do another draft and bring it back to here or yeah. anyone else who wants to look it over it is long it would benefit from a clear statement at the beginning like this is what this is about like re like because some people don't won't digest the whole letter the first paragraph and the last paragraph right with people yep yeah we'll read okay so homework <clears throat> action item for all of us go through it again um by next Friday. And so, well, send stuff to Chelsea. What is the date of the week? Wednesday. Let's try by Monday to send things to Chelsea so okay. she can give Ben, you know, a couple of days to get to get another. Is it, is it on a Google Doc? Uh, it's currently, it, it is, it, it's, it, it is, absolutely. It'd be very easy to make a copy. Like okay. how well, Ben usually should works. Make a copy and then do suggested edits. Is that? I feel or... like that gets very messy. I feel yeah. like it should come from one person. The ideas that we have for Ben okay. to. Yeah. I mean, it, it's yeah. possible to set it up where where one person is the owner and other people can make suggestions, oh, sorry, and then one person would way. be in charge of accepting or not accepting. Mm -hmm. okay. However, you guys want to do it. You want to do it paper? Well, no, the, no uh, just e e email the okay. the committee, which is me and Chelsea. Just uh, yeah, like you know, I don't know. You can make edits on this. Mm -hmm. or and, I guess you can't because it's not a, it's a PDF. But just whatever. Just send me however it works for you to the suggestion of what we should change. 
I'll send it to Ben. He'll come up with a new letter, hopefully by the end of the week. And then if not, we can just do it ourselves. But are there other substantive uh, changes that people, you know, I hear wordiness, I hear, well, I said um, something about specific words. If someone feels that this is the wrong direction and it would take a complete rewrite or, you know, more discussion as a group about what we really want to say, please speak up now um, because I think what we're talking about in terms of sending thoughts to Chelsea are things like, you know, can we have it be a three paragraph deal with this thesis statement? Or people, what? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that's more like format yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, uh, uh, the dry stuff. Does the meat of it, does the direction of it work for people? Is it what we want? I think to it basically just says we're going to look at our ends over the next while and make changes so that they're more relevant. And this is your school board, and this is how you get in touch with people or come to the meetings. And More thoughts that come up, email Chelsea. Yeah. Monday's the deadline Great. so that we can get them on Monday to, to Ben by end of day. So let's say Monday at noon. move on to uh, monitoring. Third part of our agenda here, the superintendent evaluation process. Um, I know I'm assigned to talk about this, although Chelsea has been um, chatting with the SBA about different formats and processes. So yeah, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot, but. Um. <laughs> So I had a conversation with uh, Debbie from the SBA about, first of all, talking about doing our ENDS training. That's another whole subject. But she did send me information for the superintendent evaluation. Um, and I forwarded it to you all. I don't know if you had a chance to look it over. But uh, basically, we can hire the VSBA and pay them $1,500 for them to assist us with the evaluation. Um, there would be a committee within our committee that would oversee it, the superintendent evaluation. So it would be like maybe three or four people from this board um, to oversee the process. And then as a, as a, Part of it, the superintendent would do a super would do a self evaluation, and um, everyone would leave the whole process with three to five annual goals. I don't know if people had a chance to look over the 
the SBA superintendent evaluation service that I sent out a couple weeks ago. The same one that we did a few years ago? I think it is probably the same process. Um, they said they've had lots of requests to do this this year. Yep. And I think it's a good place to start. I think it would be um, beneficial for us going through the process at the end of the process to have our own thing going forward that's done every year that we would write into the policies. Are people in favor of, if, if you would have the time to develop an opinion on this, um, being led, hiring someone to lead us in this process? The other, another option, not the only other option, um, is to design something ourselves with that kind of structure in mind or other ideas people might have. I think, you know, taking into consideration money um, and what we want to get out of it. I think that's the first thing we need to. I mean, I think the cost is relatively reasonable. Mm -hmm. 1500 seems fairly inexpensive to me. Um, And they were really transparent with the rubric. Yeah, I mean, it, it's right here. It's mm -hmm. not. Nothing hidden or like. So would this be for this coming year or to evaluate for this year? I think it would probably be for this past year. No? It would be for the past year, looking forward to the next year, making changes for the future. So Alda, and that is a good process. And so there's a couple steps that you have to take if you want to do that. Uh, when you do an evaluation, you tell people up front what you're looking for. So it would be inappropriate to put a different evaluation down at the end of the process mm -hmm. like you know if you tell me tomorrow we're doing a survey and then uh you know we're taking the results of it or we're following this process that wouldn't be appropriate uh, you also have in my contract and i'm happy to have the contract changed um, just so that you know what, what it states in there my contract is the policy governance and i'm happy to actually go with this process i think it's a good one uh, but my contract states very clearly that my evaluation is based on the ELM entries, um, and that's the only thing that I'm evaluating. Well, but it does say that we review performance annually. Yes, but right, the way that, but, but, but what you use for that review is the entry report and the EL, which I think is my personal self, is it doesn't provide enough feedback. Um, this, the way that this would work out, is you sit down in the process, uh, we sit down together. Um, we develop what the goals are collaboratively, um, and then those are the goals that over the course of the next year, I work on with the faculty and with the community and everybody else, and then at the end of the year is when the actual evaluation itself happens. Um, because especially if you're changing goals, which this is doing, I know what the survey is that they use, and it would be significantly different than how things are structured right now. How things are structured right now are specifically around the ends of whether or not I'm violating the executive limitations. Um, the things that that survey is measuring on are good things, but it is different. And so it's appropriate to give time to actually be able to get those things in place. Hopefully that makes sense. So in my on. mind, it would yeah. be a combination of the ends report, and that's what the we, would, report, we would work that's... together to figure out. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm happy to have the contract change to accept this because I actually like this process better because so it provides feedback. It also looks like, I mean, and that was my impression when I looked at it. All of our policies, most of these things are covered in our policies. So in the e communications to the board, um, one of the stipulations is he needs to provide the information that the board needs to do its job. That's one of the things in, in our in our policy. So, what what I would like to see is to just connect these with the policies that we already have, 
because I think it, I think it's going to go, I think it'll, it'll, um, uh, I think it'll go right along with the policies we already, we already have. I do too, although I think that what we're trying to do in, in talking to people about a different process is because what we have right now feels too restrictive and too surface level. So, and, and one of the reasons for that is that we are under a policy governance, governance, uh, which <clears throat> I would like to reevaluate as a group if we want to continue that way. And I think this is one of, this is um, an example of a place where I personally don't think that policy governance is um, successful for us. It's not working for us. The end. I, I have been here for six years, and we had this conversation the other night. I have never had a board member ask me a meaningful question about anything that's happening in and around the community, or what the community may be talking about, or what rumor may be out there, and it's, those conversations need to happen, and any process that's going to allow those conversations to happen. Uh, because otherwise what happens is you get set up with a, a single narrative echo chamber that people are hearing all the time and they're never hearing it from me. Uh, and that's not a good 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 place to be in. Uh, it doesn't stop to us. So again, I, I am all for changing. So I, there's no negative, but there's steps to take to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, just to so I, I'm, I find myself wondering if this process could be used retrospectively to identify places of focus and have it not carry uh, as like a preview of like, I don't know if you've ever taken a course, but you take a pretest before the course. <laughs> well, funny you should say that because <laughs> go ahead. So, yeah. so like, this it's like a, right yeah. on the this is right on the on, on there. there this, this is, is on, on here. The paper. So, so there's like so it's on that page. I'll go back to it. I'm going. I'm going. I'm on my way. So it says when we when we do it for so real next year. Yeah. So this is what it says. If this is the first evaluation, the board will be conducting with the superintendent. The VSBA recommends that the process be designed to review the performance of the superintendent during the transition year and this evaluation serve as the baseline for future evaluations and should provide the board and superintendent with the opportunity. So what it's saying is we establish the goals, you give me the year, yeah. you get baseline data, and then you use that point. I thought it was saying... You have it. Based upon your policies that, that, that I have followed, your baseline data is the EL reports and it's the ENS reports. And so one of the things I'm actually suggesting tonight, because there usually isn't a lot of feedback that comes from the board on these, it's usually, yeah, we accept it or no, we don't. And again, that's not a, it's not a criticism, it's just it's, it's where we stand. This is what I recommend is, is just basically a feedback protocol when the board reads an EL report or reads an ENS report, is there's just basic little protocol questions that are, that are asked, you know? When you read that report, what jumps out to you is significant? What data is surprising? What areas would you like more information on? And then based upon that discussion of that report, you know, what would you like the district to focus more closely on? And that's one way of giving feedback with what we've got now. Uh, and that's a process that we've never had. Like I said, for six years, it's, you know, the report's up there. People don't seem to feel happy about it, but there's no feedback on it. I'm not sure what it is that people want. And so I, that might help us in, in the state of Florida now. Um, but again, I'm open. I'm very open to the process. We just want to do it right so it's just and fair. Um, did Debbie accept that? Uh, give you an idea of when d does it matter when our contract with them would start? Is it you know a beginning of a school year? Is it? Yeah. I didn't get that then. Okay, and I haven't worked through this paperwork enough to be able to say this is when we would do it. This is how it should be. <clears throat> what I do know is that. 
it will take a group of people some extra meetings and extra time if anyone has that to give. I don't know. Well, um, so I think our first step is uh, voting on whether we want to engage in a contract with the BSBA um, to start this process, even if the start is information getting. process I've been through it once here um, again my dissatisfaction at that point in time the results were good um, was just that it was sprung on me at the end of the year with no notice that what the expectations that people were measuring and you know, would change. so it's appropriate to tell people ahead of time what you want them to be working on give them time to work on it and that's what you're about. especially if it's a departure from you know, what we're Sure. I don't think it is. I mean, I I read through this before, and I'm just reviewing it again. Basically, most everything that we have in policy is on here. The specifics of the interpersonal stuff, which um, who's gonna who? How do they gather that information? They send a survey out to my direct reports. So that's the principals, that's the, the transportation um, person, uh, it's the directors, it's that sort of thing. And that was done before, was it helpful? Yeah, we did it the first year I was on the board, like shortly after, so yeah. was that 2020? 20, 2020. <laughs> yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't think it's a bad process. Right. So I'm, I not, I'm, not, I'm not fighting the process a lot, I think it's a good one, I think it's a good change. Yeah. Well, so maybe it would look like. So that's the only thing that's new. So, t so typically, what what they what they end up doing is there's three surveys. The board fills one out, my direct reports fill one out, and then I fill one out. And then the the VSBA will kind of consolidate that data. We'll sit down and have a discussion about it. Actually, I think I rated myself the lowest of anybody on the, on the survey the last time we took it. Uh, we have a discussion about it, we figure out what the goals are based upon what's there, and we set those goals for the next year uh, in terms of what the measurement is about. The piece that I haven't seen um, is that, you know, once we set those goals is how they measure those. Um, because typically the only part that I was involved in or that the, the board was involved in that time was just the measurements based on the surveys. So I haven't seen the second year. So we would set it up so that you would have goals for this next year and then look at the at the end of the year the goals that we set before september will be about yeah, yeah. and i can um contact pietro in terms of language change yeah i can i can type it up and you can send it up to pietro if you want so i find the near um. So I guess the next step would be. And that's to protect you. Mm -hmm. Take take a motion about having a vote on whether we want to hire SBA to facilitate, and then the next step after that is when can we start the process, and then the next step after that would be who is on that sub committee. Okay. I think that should all be one thing. Yeah. Okay. So but are there any volunteers? To, to, uh, to, to give her the, the authority to contact the SBA. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I will make a motion for Chelsea to 
contact SBA on behalf of the school board to commence the process on facilitating an evaluation of the superintendent. And at the cost of 1500 and for the board to formulate a subcommittee. Do I have a second for that run on motion? <laughs> second. Sarah's second. Sarah's second. Sarah? Sarah do you want to do the charge for the committee at the second motion rather than adding it on? Because we need to give that committee a charge, or we form the committee and then we do a motion for the charge. Well, the charge we won't know until we have uh, more information okay. from the okay. process right. processors. Uh, so, is there any discussion before a vote on this motion? Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All right. Chelsea, are you raising? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Unanimous. Oh, all those opposed? No, because it's unanimous and no one's. Okay. Great. So, I'll. Uh, is anyone interested in serving on the committee? without knowing exactly <laughs> what <laughs> that will entail besides more time than mm -hmm. you're doing now mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> more work than you're doing now and reporting back to the larger board but working closely with the vsba representative did they say like how much time it was going to take or additional time no you know, we can form that committee at this special meeting in July. Yeah. Yeah. Um, once we have more information more, yeah. from yeah. that would be helpful. So no one has to further have might be able to have them come to your strategic planning and have that discussion. Huh. It could be yeah. yeah, we still need to figure out what July is gonna be. Um, yeah, I would say that would be this training for July because the end thing is different than it was. I don't know if anyone got that email I sent out of the summary of that but I sent this out of last week right and we'll get to that we do have an, a VSBA ends discussion yet after um, the ends report we'll vote. <clears throat> okay so we've moved to go into that process we will talk about the committee at our July meeting which we will also talk about after Lane, take it away with the answer. So we've already did a major presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this isn't meant to put folks on the spot because it's new, but I think it's it's a good recommendation. And that's kind of what I put up here. Um, so the, the change that I'm kind of recommending um, in the process and it, and it does stay within the bounds of policy governance, um, and that has to do with uh, how the reports are generally kind of managed. Um, folks have known that I've been requesting more kind of direct discussion and kind of feedback um, on the guidelines effort, efforts on behalf of the district. And so I think if the reports are properly considered, we can actually get that feedback out of them. Um, and so the, the questions that I would throw out for the board is kind of starting questions and then as people get a little bit more comfortable with it, uh, we can get a little bit more specific and I, would show, I can show you what specific it look like. But I would, I would ask these questions, you know, if both folks have had the ENDS report for this is actually month three now, um, if folks have had a chance to look through it, are there things that jump out as significant, you know, either significant goods or what you think made the significant bad? What data is surprising? What areas do you think we need to collect more information on, if any? And then based upon that discussion, come back to this idea of, uh, you know, what would you as the board, as the representatives of the taxpayer in the community, might like the district to focus more closely on, uh, based upon this stuff. If things were a little bit more refined, you know, we could start by changing question three. Uh, so same questions, but we make question three a little bit more specific and then it's about you know what are the implications for teaching and learning based upon that we can talk. Because 
because that's the focus and that's what we should be working on and that's what we should be concentrating on for kids. But that's my suggestion. So, just a recommendation to people. Mm -hmm. I'm always in favor of a jumping off point for discussion like these questions. I think it's really hard. Well, I've gathered, at least with this group. What jumps out of me is, uh, is how awful we are in seventh grade. And I think we say we're catching up with time, but my goodness, if we weren't starting way down there to begin with, with eighth and ninth grade, we further ahead or the higher above the bar. Like, what in the world? And why should we not solve those problems? Those are very, very good questions. Um, some of the additional data that might be helpful is looking at a longitudinally over time and see that it's actually improved significantly over the, over the last last five years, right? And the data the data is in there. But um, why are our sixth graders doing fine and our seventh graders are not? And 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 this is comparing them over this time is, and with other and, and with other peers. Like yeah. other kids go through this, other seventh graders go through the same social emotional challenges as I want to do. Or, or do we have so there was a plan in place to address this um, just prior to COVID, and it involved moving. And, and this is good because we can have some very blunt conversations. And this is going to be a very blunt conversation that I think we can be with some people. Um, we tried to move the sixth grade up into the high school to create a real middle school model, right? Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade together. We do some work because we had a whole bunch of financial resources to be able to actually kind of separate them from the rest of the high school. It would also have allowed us to um, provide an adequate space for the preschools that we were building at the time, right? We brought in uh, a bunch of the preschool um, grades that hadn't existed before. Um, the problem that happened, and this goes back to why the discussions between the board and the superintendent need to be more detailed and folks need to get out of the echo chamber. Is what happened in those discussions and trying to get that change to happen and why it failed was very typical of what happens in this community and in, in this district in particular. So I sat down with the cabinet and the first thing we said is look, you know, we gotta go and talk with the community about this. This is a big deal. Um, we got to have those conversations. We got to get their input. Um, but before we do that, let's pull together what it would look like. Because the first question that anybody is going to ask, especially the teachers, is if you do this, are we going to lose jobs? And so we spent two or three weeks. Um, every principal was doing the work of kind of examining how we could pull these grades up, how the teachers would switch around. And when we got done, we got to the conclusion. Uh, no one was going to lose a job. In fact, we were going to actually have to add it because it was one or two more. Um, so about four hours, and folks saw this with uh, Brian Rainville, um, it was a similar pattern that happened. About four hours before the open forum, we had sent it out to get the community and the staff together to have a discussion. A bunch of staff members got online on social media and said things like, they, Lane is going to destroy this destroy the school, destroy your kids' opportunity to be able to go off to high-performing colleges and work everybody into a tizzy. Um, the day came. Why did they say that? What's that based on? What's their, what's that's, their, what's their fear? What's the, that's my, that is my point in terms of the echo chamber. The damage was done the second that that act occurred. Folks came in. It took me about an hour to get folks calmed down get them into a place where they could actually look at the data with me and the data was pretty clear you would have a rise up through the high school in terms of student performance in fifth grade it would start to drop in sixth grade it would drop a little more in seventh grade it was rock bottom and so when they started to see that data they started to look at it and kind of come out of the fuge that people had put them in um, and we had the discussion and the discussion um, they started to kind of change their tone uh, but the damage was already done because, again, that one-sided narrative. Um, and so the agreement that was made at that time with the folks that were in that meeting was, look, uh, get the scores up uh, at the middle school first, and then we'll be happy to have sixth grade. And the scores have been going up. But remember, your scores have started out as rock bottom in 
the state and where it started. Uh, again, blunt conversation, so let's have it. Um, we've been able to do a tremendous amount of work um, at the elementary level. Folks have been receptive. They're not happy about the additional work that's been required, but they've been troopers and they've done it and they've done a good job trying to do the work that is required uh, to get the high school and the tech center where they need to be has been um, and I'll leave it at that. Um, so where, where we are, things are improving. And again, the improvements have been happening during COVID, which is an impressive feat. So we got to give folks credit for that. But they're not where we want them to be. And so a lot of the work next year, and one of the things we'll talk about in executive session, um, is that there are certain things that all schools do. Our schools need to be doing them too. Um, I've spent three or four years working with folks and having open forums and having communications that people either show up to or don't about the work that needs to be done. Um, and now we're at the point where people just need to step up the plate with the fed their input. They don't want to do some of the simple things like the homework policy. They don't want to change the master schedule at the high school basic structures that would help all of these things. When you say today, are you referring to our staff? I'm not, again, I'm trying to be kind. Um, but it, it, it has been, there has been a lot of recalcitrance. Um, and again, people, I get it, but we got a mission to do, and we've got a mission on behalf of the kids that we need to follow through on this time. Again, elementary school has come a tremendous way. They're actually performing quite well. They were willing to do the work. They, they listened. They worked uh, with folks to be able to do that. Again, it was additional work. They're going to be commended for it, um, but they did the work and the improvements happened. I just want to push on you a little bit yeah. about um, when you say uh, the work has been done, but they're not happy about it, they're not they're not happy about the extra work that has been done. It sounds that's like what we hear in negotiations. Okay. Okay. Just, I, I hear on one hand that our, our our staff is satisfied, and I hear on another hand that, that they are not. And depends. So I'm just on trying to get a sense of like what is the um, depends on the school. Yeah. The two schools that need critical work um, and have been for a while are RTCC in uh, RUHS, and again, I think we go into executive session. I'm happy to be quite open about what my thoughts are. Uh, Can I ask about that? Because I remember the, uh, very soon after I came to town, I think, uh, the sixth grade middle school thing, and I think a lot of people, myself included, had a very emotional reaction to it. It's a big change. My junior high was seventh and eighth, so um, I changed from you know it's been that way for a hundred years. Um, and and I remember the biggest what I remember is the kind of primary emotional response was this is happening next year. That means my kid is already in a school year. I'm not even saying that's what the truth was, but that was the original. That's so, what people heard. Right. So and that's what I heard and how I understood it, that we're in the middle of a school year and starting that fall, suddenly my fifth grade, I didn't have fifth grade at the time, but suddenly someone's fifth grader would be in middle school with like no prep. And I think, I think any big change is going to initially have a very big emotional response and it has to, we have to allow for it and it has to, be for a while. I mean, stupid COVID got in the way, right? And mm -hmm. maybe given another year, people would start to really let the data sink in, maybe take over the emotion and see that may they still may disagree, yeah. but may start to agree. I think it was just a- But a, that initial, it was to the point where when people actually calm down, Two of the staff members that had been part of what they were putting out on social media to get people worked up. And again, I'm not saying that they did it to be mean or cruel. They probably heard whatever they heard. Again, instead of, and that's why I keep saying to the board, you need to talk to me. Um, instead of having those face-to-face -face conversations, they heard, heard something from somebody. Probably one of the principals was talking about it and they heard a fragment of it. Um, 
and it killed something that could have been beautiful and, 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 and could, have, could have worked. And it wasn't going to be going into place next year. It could the next year. It couldn't have. We had structures that had to be built first. It was a two to three year project. Uh, but we had gone through, like I said, when 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 we're planning stuff out, especially in those times in terms of trying to fix things. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we've done our homework so that when people are asking questions, we can give them honest answers so hopefully they can feel peace. And that's the homework that we can do. Um, but it's a shame that it fell apart that way because we would be in a much different place now. Well, but I think that's unavoidable. I mean, I think these days I have an emotional response to something. I can immediately pick up my phone and put out to the world listen to my opinion and my emotional response on this thing and everybody on the damn social media is going to see it and have and either agree or disagree <gasps> oh my god i can't believe she's having to go through that i, I don't think i think it's unavoidable so i think <clears throat> I, I and i wasn't a part of the process then and this might be exactly what happened but i i also think with chelsea making a suggestion about being at the fourth of july parade which i may or may not agree with, but you know having a table and talking about it i think you know, I heard about it because someone hung out of a window at the hospital where I happened to be walking past and said, hey, have you heard? I, and I, when, when I went to an informational night about it, there was one, per, it was Elijah, it happened to be Elijah doing one, one person who people could ask of. And I think I'm certainly in favor of being a part of a board that you know, is at different places and able to answer so questions, and we all have. What I need from this board, mm -hmm. I don't need, and, and again, this is not, a, it's, it's just an observation. It's an observation from other boards that I've worked with in the past. It's an observation from how I've seen interactions with other um, superintendents and board relationships, is when you hear things on the street and it disturbs you, you pick up the phone and you call, or if you're a board member, you call your board chair or your, your co-chair and you call and say, hey, we're here and this is going on. And you pick up the phone and you call me and say, Wayne, do you know about this? And you fill us in. So that at the very least, if I'm reasonable and rational and it all makes sense, then you got a pretty good indication that I know what I'm talking about and things are moving forward the way that they should. And it puts you in a position so that when people say things that are not correct that might be damaging, you can say, have you talked to Wayne? Because I'm hearing something new. A simple word like that from a person that's in a leadership position can have a tremendous impact on how people interpret what's going on in the district. If folks are just receiving information and being worried about it, and not having those conversations and not directing them to the people they can get the actual answers from, we're gonna end up right where we are. And I think that's part of our, in, is our intention with this communication going out to the, to the and it's community. Wonderful. Because I think it hasn't been, at least for me at that time, I, I didn't, think the board or you, I didn't know you were as accessible as we and you are. Well, policy governance kind of confused us all. Yeah. My, my, my relationships in the past um, were just that. There, there's always going to be rumor and innuendo, but what you want to make sure is that if it's out there, it's, it's saying the truth. And the one way that as a group, and that's what I was trying to talk about, but not so eloquently last time, as a group, we work together as a team. It doesn't mean that you believe everything that I say. You check if you're, if you're unsure, and I provide you with the data. Um, that's, a, that's an appropriate response. But if you're hearing rumors in the street and they're not correct, you correct them. Because that's what puts it to rest. Otherwise, they take on a life of their own. They build and they build and they build, and we get to where we are. And I agree that one of the problems is that I think policy governance has, I'll just speak for myself, has made me feel so restricted and worried that saying really anything on my own because of the one voice thing uh, or only speaking to you and through you to others has made me 
think that I can't say I, I want you to say things, but I want you to make sure that you've, you've heard both sides before you make a judgment. Mm -hmm. That's what good leaders need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm, there's a lot about policy governance that I like. But like every system, they all have weaknesses. And so usually you take the best that it offers and you do what you need to to fix the other portions and bring something in that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And if things are gonna go forward and if folks want these two schools to be corrected, I need the backing of the board and I need your trust. And I'm not asking for you to give it to me blatantly. What I'm asking for you to do is when you hear things that you're concerned about is to give me a call and let me speak my case and then make your decision not mine so that when you're hearing things on the street you don't even have to respond with what i've told you but you can say that's not what i my understanding is go talk to me or you can say you know this is what what i know as long as it's not something confidential so that people are getting that information and they're also being trained to go to the source uh, as opposed to kind of share the information. I'm going to throw this up if, if folks will indulge me because it's, it is a part of the conversation and I think it's very important for folks to, to see and to know because this is... Oops, sorry about that. Did I cut you off? I, I apologize. I didn't, I didn't realize. So one of the discussions, um, and I had this with uh, a, a group in the union yesterday, was the big common thing that is said all over town all the time is how bad the attrition rate is in the district. And so the easiest thing to do, and I had to black some of this out because there's other information here that's confidential, these are the people that are leaving this year. If we add it up, it's actually 13 teachers. When I talked with uh, the, the group who was wonderful, by the way, yesterday, um, and, and, and very, there's a lot of good works that we can accomplish together, I believe, after the conversation. 13 teachers, um, I'm gonna subtract two because they're actually moving to other districts, other positions within the district. Um, there are two that were non-renewed. And then the folks yesterday said, well, here's a couple that you may not have heard from yet, so we're going to add them in. So right now, based upon this, in terms of teachers, there's 11 teachers in the district that are moving on. If we do the math, there are, let me move this over, there are 147 teachers total in the district. So what is 11 divided by 147? Let's see if we have a calculator. 11 divided by 147. That is our turnover rate, 7.4%. I'm sorry that the, the calculator is not showing up there for teachers. I have the article from Rand Corporation and I can share that with you, and I'm happy to share it with the board and anybody in the community. The average turnover rate for schools in the United States prior to COVID, not now, prior to COVID is 16%. Can we see what kind of damage, misinformation that people aren't called on can cause to the image of the district? I have been dealing with the rumor that I am not supportive of the staff, that I have been cutting support staff. Here is some data. This is when I started in 2017-18, here is 22-23. And again, I'm not saying anybody is lying, I'm saying they are speaking from their heart and what they believe. So I want to make that clear. I'm not beating anybody up. In 2017, 2018, when I started, there were 60 support staff in this district. There are 82 now. I have not been cutting support staff. I have been adding. I have been adding at the requests of the staff and of my principals. In terms of teachers, when I started, there were 130. There are now 147. 
in terms of uh, bus drivers, we've got two more, we've got an extra tech person, we've got three more administrators. The total staffing level in 27, 2018 was 217, it's now 262. I have supported my staff extremely well. In terms of your budget, and this is a fee in and of itself, which credit should be given to, and I'm gonna toot my own horn on this, even though some people are gonna be angry because it's increased this much. These increases all went to supporting the work of changing how the schools were performing by supporting the staff. When I started the district budget was 16.6 million, this year it's 23.5. I have raised the district budget, total district budget by 41% since I have been here in support of the staff and in support of this district to do the work that needs to be done. I'm at a point where I just need the final kind of holdout schools who I get are nervous and, and, and they've been able to do their thing for a long time before I came to get on board and work and together and say, hey, these are things that might actually improve what we're doing. A master schedule, homework policy, um, not letting kids uh, end their high school two weeks before the end of the that's been a, a thing here is two weeks before school is out, the kids are doing, um, oh, what do you call it? Their portfolio defenses. So each kid spends about 40 minutes doing their portfolio defense, and the other rest of the two weeks it's makeup. So, yes, so these are structures that we need to change. The staff, understandably, have gotten used to those structures, and so changing them is going to be difficult. Um, in addition to all this, Heather this year alone has brought in over 1.2, actually it's up to 1.4 yep. million dollars in grants to support the works in this district. During COVID, during the time when I was by myself managing a crisis because I was the only central office administrator outside of a business manager and a special education person who don't do the general stuff that needs to be done in and around the district, in addition to all the other work that was going on, I brought in $7 million to grants into this district to help and support the work that was done here. So the reason that I'm bringing it up is we need to, if anything, we need to get back to the reality of what's happening and stop the rumor mills and stop the, the, the things that are being said or if they're being said and, and people believe them, come and ask. I'll give you the data and if I screwed something up, I'm going to be the first person to admit it, and then we're going to fix it. Um, but again, I just I appreciate the time to be able to say this. Um, but I've had the tar taken out of me for three years now um, on things that have made it very difficult to do the job, um, and I felt like I never wanted to do it. I apologize, but I appreciate the time to talk about it. I think we were talking about ants. Well, do people have any questions about the numbers that, that Lane just had up there? So I had a long conversation with you way back in April, if you remember, um, just talking about maybe expanding the ends a little bit too and remember we talked a little bit about you know some of these ends they end at ninth grade and we talked about and you sort of shared with me how and it's not in here yet but how the different departments are working on it, it is it is some benchmarks some cases, for yes. things beyond so uh, I think it's like ELA Ninth grade is the last time they're going to have that standardized testing, right? So we've got to, ninth grade is just really the beginning of high school, so we've got to have some benchmarks beyond standardized testing to so, sort of make sure. And it sounds like you've been at work from, from our conversation. Several of the different departments are all working on further benchmarks because a lot of this testing data 
ends pretty early on. Yeah, it used to be 11th grade and they moved it to 9th. And so the, all the departments, uh, they had to, so every department that was associated with a, and it's a very good question, I'm glad you asked it because this is where people hear what's going on. Every department that fell under a foundational knowledge end uh, worked on curriculum this year and they worked on reinterpreting the end statements. Why did we do it that way? Because they're the experts and this gets them invested in the work that needs to be done to schools so like the uh, English department and the social studies department and I think I talked about this in here um, they are settling in on the there's a acronym for them but they're basically the evidence uh, style essay questions that the, oh, that the DBQs, the DBQs right? that the mm -hmm. uh, advanced placement uses because this is a high power High power essay, the students have to go to source documents, um, they have to prove their point, they have to go to the source documents to get the information to, to, to justify and prove it. And so they have it set up so that all years that the students are taking English, all years that they're taking social studies, they're using the DBQs that they're developing um, as well as one of them, I don't remember if it was English or social studies off the cuff, um, also has a major kind of capstone research paper in addition to as the data that they are going to be using um, for the potential work. Um, and so that work has happened this year. Um, and so the next step next year in the fall, with five days that we've got up front, um, part of it is actually to start to take a look at, okay, based upon the data that we currently have, if these are all the things that the students are supposed to learn, which ones are they not up the snuff on which ones do they are they historically underperforming in and as part of those discussions there's a facilitated process that i created 20 years ago that's been quite effective identify what they are get together with your team your expert team in ela if it's ela and determine what new learning activities and lesson plans we're going to put together right now at the beginning of this year that are gonna address, or you believe are gonna address those deficiencies. You put those into place when the time comes um, in the learning cycle for the year, and then you follow it up with a formative assessment to see if they had the impact that they were supposed to have. If they caused the kids to improve to where you want them to be, you move on. If they didn't, you come back together to a team and you come up with a different set of learning activities and you try it again until you find what works. And if you can't find what works, and that's when you come and you talk to me and we work together to develop a professional development plan. And that way the professional development is coming from the actual staff. They're telling us what, what we need and they've got objective reasons for why they chose what they need to learn about. Um, so there's a whole process, but I can't do the process unless people are willing to get on board. Um, it seems like after yesterday's conversation, which was a good one, they were asking to work on a lot of the things I've been trying to work on for a long time. Um, and so we have a, a, a follow-up. We're gonna take the half of the day on the first day back from school. It's a professional development day to map out those plans and start to get them in place. Um, so again, it's, uh, it's been a process. Uh, there is a lot that's going on. Whether it'll pay off in the end, it'll have an improvement. Um, well, th this, will be a much more robust end statement. It's not going to end at ninth grade. And the right way to do it is I shouldn't be coming into you and presenting their work. They should be coming into you and presenting their work. Right? Mm -hmm. That's how this should work. That's how they get invested in it um, and they feel that it's important. And so there is quite a well-developed plan. I just got to get people that are willing to do it. Elementary, for the most part, was. Um, it's been a little bit more difficult at, at, at Now, time. is that because you already have, you, there's already sort of at the elementary level, a fair amount of test-based, uh, you know, the tests are happening at the elementary yeah. level already. And so the teacher, and there are tools there yeah. for the teachers to use. But I'm wondering if you're getting pushed back at all because I know before we did look at test data, but the teachers also looked, they created some other benchmarks 
along the way as well. Or yeah. we were sort of working toward some other benchmarks <coughs> because if you talk with several teachers, they'll say, yeah, the test, I, there's not 100% buy-in and I'm a little bit of a skeptic myself. Not everybody is a great test taker. And so we have to have a more robust system that looks at other benchmarks that professional educators, along with curriculum experts, can be looking at and saying, here are some other ways to look at fluency with reading, um, you know, ability to problem solve reading and, math, and so in, in, in science. In addition, in addition to the state testing, part of those increases in budget that have brought in a robust assessment system with two or three online tools um, for the teachers to use on the fly that should grow the over time. At the same time, I also developed a evaluation process that is goal focused, which I sent out to the board a few months back, or maybe it was even a year ago, I can't keep it all straight anymore, that a lot of folks actually adhere to. And I showed you what the results of one of them looked like. They were collecting the data that they thought was most important based upon the, 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 the buffet of things that they could choose from to set goals um, in terms of we were primarily focused on that the last year or two um, in collecting their own data, responding to it in their own classrooms, talking with their peers about it if it wasn't what they, they wanted it to be, if they weren't on track to meet the goals they set for themselves. And it was a really, really good process. It's long and it's arduous, but it gets us where we want to go and it gets more efficient over time. So there are tremendous systems. The, the, the fight right now is I need people on board uh, and that's been most difficult. Maybe, you know, some of those failures, may, maybe mine, I tried to connect with folks with the open forums and listening sessions and be there to have these discussions openly and publicly so everybody could have them. Uh, but it was difficult to get folks to, to show. Uh, the, the staff? To, to be involved in, in Yes. Creating the that's why they were they were, that's why they were involved in reinterpreting the ends reports. Um, you know. So they did do it, or they didn't want. So to. now we're, we are we are at the point of changing some structural things that need to change. That there's been a lot of pushback on in the the, the union survey. That was a lot of what it was. Is you know that there's not going to be homework policy over my dead body, you know, the master schedule is never going to work, and it's like, hey, we've talked about it for a year, had input, can you try it for a year or two with us, and we'll continue to collect input, and if we can tweak it to make it better, we will, but can we at least try it, and, and I think that's what the primary fight going on is right, right about now. Can you not mandate that? Well, that's... If you want to have that discussion openly, let's have that discussion openly because this is going to tell me where the board sits. Yes, I can. And that there are uh, one of the, the, the tough parts in, 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 in negotiations. And again, people were wonderful and sweet, and I don't want to damage that yesterday because it was awesome. Um, but yes, we have obligations to the staff under the contract and we do our darndest to live up to them. The thing that seems to get forgotten from my perspective and from what I've experienced is that they have obligations to us as well. The master schedule that they teach under is our call. Is what? It's our call as well. Oh, our call. Right? Whether or not there's a homework policy, that's our call. Our CBA allows us to do those things. You never want to force things on people, which is why we've been trying to invite them to the table to say, give us input. But once the input is had, we've got to make the decision is okay. Is this reasonably calculated to get us to where we want to go or not? If it's not going to get us to where we want to go, especially after hearing from the educators who, who are smart people, they know, they know their stuff. 
then we don't do it. But if, if what we're hearing, which is what we heard, is mostly fear of the unknown, then we move forward with it and we find out whether we really should have been afraid to begin. And so that's where we are. So yes, I can. But if I mandate it, and that's what we're going to talk about in the executive session, we're going to talk about what the repercussions can be. Um, and ripping things apart and you know, upsetting people, and uh, they can get rather ugly. And so that's not the preferable way to do it, but yes, we can. If we get stuck going down the path, and that's the reason the trust with the board is so important, is the board needs to, when people come and complain and say, you know, Lane is doing this, Lane is doing that, that's when you need to ask those questions of me, decide if you trust what I've done and what I'm doing, and if you do, you back me. If you expect me to do that type of work on my own, it will fail. And, what, and I can tell you the possible pathways that, 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 that will evolve from that if you want to hear it. Well, my, oh, oh, I, I just, I, I hate to interrupt a fruitful discussion, but I feel like we've gotten away from this end's report, which, yeah. you know, we, we do need to vote on. So I, I, I really hate to stunt uh, a, a, a juicy discussion, but I, I feel the need to rein us in. Yeah. We're, we're going to come back to this discussion. <clears throat> we are going to come back to yeah. this discussion this evening. Yeah. Okay. Um, but back to things that popped out for people with this end report that may or may not hinder us moving to a vote, whether to accept it or not. Well, I'm ex I will say that I, I met with Lane because I had several reservations, but at, when I spoke with him about how things are in the works for changes, I'm going to accept this one the way it is. It is not the best in this report. I mean, if you look at kind of the data, I mean, this is this is what we're holding to the community and saying, here, this is what we've accomplished. It's it's pretty small. A lot of the data ends at ninth grade. But again, it's a work in progress, and he's been working with the staff to, to begin to really make it a little bit of a meatier document that's going to really drive down into the system and hopefully create ends that, that work for students. And again, you know, I did see this flip with seventh grade, but again, you got to remember our. Remember five years ago it was here, now it's here. And, and the size of our, I, I mean, they're, we're Much not worse. talking about a, a, a huge population size. So you can have different classes with different strengths. And that particular class may not have a great strength in terms of standardized testing. And, and I, I, th I may not be understanding the- Se Seventh grade and fourth grade are typically weak across the nation, just because of the changes that are happening. Yeah, the, the, the that, that difficulty is level. Yeah. So it, we're, it's actually pretty impressive that our fourth grade is doing what it is, because it's usually fourth and seventh. In, in the assessment <coughs> instrument itself. In the assessment instruments, if, if yeah. you look at what happens across, yeah. not just the state, but the country, those yeah. are the normal years. And again, my, my response to this is, this is great. We're, we're, I would like to see, I would like to see some other data points that are looked at in addition to just testing. Now, but you, maybe have, but you have, have to the, tell me I what that those data points are. Well, no, I want the professional educators to look at, okay, what are some other ways besides just straight testing that can show that a student is learning how to read, learning how to solve problems, engaging in the social studies, 
and the arts, but maybe they're not the best test taker, and so they're not showing necessarily proficiency 100%. But what's not, but so, seem like but, but, like but, but what's not fair is to tell me you're not happy with it and not tell that's me what you clearly want. Well, and this we also ties into our, what we're trying to do with the evaluation process and to be more clear about goals, and what we also are trying to do with re-looking at our ends. I just want to remind people that and your this is approving or not part of Lane's evaluation, right? The way that it is now before we change this process. This, he based on these ends. And it yep. sure does sound to me like this group needs to do a lot of work on the ends so that we are clear about what we want from Lane. To me, this ends report is a rational and reasonable interpretation of the ends as they are now. Do I think the ends as they are now are rational and reasonable? Not so much. That's where the work has to be, but that's what this report is answering. So that's what we need to focus on in terms of this vote. Moving forward, we have work to do to figure out what we want in these ends and, and telling Lane, these are your goals, this is what we want to see, and we want to see more than test score. Whatever we, we want those goals to be, that's where, that's that's our job. Yeah. That's that's where the work needs to be done. Although it needs to be kind of, a, I mean, I'm not a professional educator. I can't tell you what the best way to assess so you call, uh, you call no, me in. but that's like the. You the, call me in. The staff comes in, and you have a conversation. The uh, 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 evaluation tool, typically for a superintendent, is negotiated. We talk about what we both think is important because I have information that you don't have about what may be possible, what may be not. But you can also, and this is a great way to engage the the staff and the schools, is to have some representatives come in as well and say, this is what we're concerned about or what we're hearing from the taxpayers that we need to do. What's the best way with all of us around the table? What are the best measurements to use? And so you get everybody's input on the table. Mm -hmm. That's the best way, I would argue, to do so the, you bring in an awesome conversation. Um, it, it really is. Yeah. Are you looking for a motion? I am looking for a motion to I make a motion second. that we accept the ends. Second. Seconded by Sam. Further discussion? All those in favor? Raise your hand or aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. The ends report is accepted as is. All right, we are not doing great with time, but this is the work that we need to do. Um, so let's just keep diving in. The ends, in terms of looking at them again, evaluate. This is where we are also in our, our annual schedule. This is when we would be reevaluating our ends. We had talked about maybe wanting to use our July training slash retreat slash our, uh, you know meeting um, to have a training to update our ends. Chelsea let us know that the recommendation from the VSBA is that we are skipping a step if we suddenly come in for a training to uh, rewrite the ends because we don't have the the information yet from the community what else they want or have we hit it all or do we need to suss out what's in here so did you tell them that we did the portrait of a graduate yeah and she said that's a really small snapshot because it's oh. not the whole community having input if they want to she said that's well, other schools do that, but they also do the, these <coughs> sort of do a larger reach out. Yeah, and she, you know, I don't know, if, I can't remember what I wrote here a week ago, but basically what she said was that um, I said, well, so what do people do? And she said, well, you know, if your town has like a big event that happens, you set up a table and you have cards that have two questions on them, and you 
ask people to fill them out. Are you from this town? Yes. Will you fill this out? Here, put it in this box. And you might get however many, 50, 100, 20, I don't know. And then you take that information and that becomes part of what your ends focus is. That's exactly what we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you did. For the portrait of a graduate? Yeah, I'm not sure how much. You've also been at the Fourth of July previously. So uh, we've currently we've got. got results from that either. So we've so got. We, okay, so maybe we that's get, we not. Nobody wants to deal on the Fourth of July. Yeah. It mm -hmm. might be um, better to go to some school events that are already happening, like not asking people to come out special for a community mm -hmm. forum, but. Sporting events or and again, we're primarily getting the, the school community and not the broader community, mm -hmm. right? So, is there other are there other events that we can think <coughs> of? Town meeting, town, town meeting. Yep. Who's yep. that? Oh. We got hundreds of responses to to the form. Um, so currently, the POG is in. I've left it in draft, like I've left that title on it draft, because whatever you decide as the ends, I really want those two things to align. I don't want it to be like, oh, the kids did all this work to do the data collection and we're invalidating their effort. It's really important that when we say, okay, this is the POG, that it's connected to how what we're assessing, how we're assessing it, and what our end statement is. So that everybody feels like, oh yeah, I had a voice in that. And I'm part of this and big picture thinking. So I'm not going to take the word draft off the POG until you feel we've collected enough data. And I'm happy to share those sheets. We have still have sheets with hundreds and hundreds of like, kids should be able to swim the Nile, or a mile, or was it the Nile? I think they misspelled it. It doesn't matter. Kids should be able to fix a car. Student, you know, and just hundreds of things like, I, I want my student to be able to do this or know this or, so maybe we should do another data dive, you know, and get more data, but not discard what we already have. No, I think it's a useful piece, for yeah. sure. I mean, I, I just think what, what she was saying is it's not representative of the stakeholders that are not involved in the school, basically. Did she have any suggestions on how to get that group? Well, these were her suggestions. Like, it's if like, your town has a big event, okay. go out there, walk up to people, be like, do you live in this town? Will you fill this out? So, she also may not know the extent of how we conducted portrait of graduate. Right. So yeah. she, you know, it may she may she, be thinking of some more boilerplate version of it than yeah. than uh -huh. what we did. Yeah. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if this group or, feels like we should just use that. Then we could well, maybe, start there. Maybe we could use that draft of the portrait of the graduate and and bring that out to the community and say. Here's what we're thinking we want our graduates of our district to look like. Does this, is this what you have in, you know, what you would see as an important? Uh, I think that would be great. How do we reach but again, that? But again, where is that forum? Because we have presented that in this forum for anybody in our community yeah. uh, to see. Did it so, go out to the? No. no, so I because was. Because it's a draft. It's a draft. And so, right. I, so I, I, I shared it with the people who worked on it. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've actually asked the artist to put a watermark over it that says draft. So we could print it up on a large scale printer and display it and ask for feedback. Can you live with this? What needs to change? What could be better? What do you like? What don't you like? You know, type of feedback before we say, okay, this is the document. But I was really hoping that we could have a document that we could say this is the document at the start of the school year. Typically, yeah. the, the final step is you email it out to the community and they vote on it. Because if you get 80% of the people coming back going, I can live with this and I think this is good, you're good to go. Uh, that was when, when we did that process, um, when I, I ran it in Swamp Scott, that was the final piece, which you got all the feedback, you adjusted it, you got it. Got to go, and then everybody in the community actually got to vote. And how do you, sorry, how do you conduct that vote? 
Do you do um, an absentee ballot, or do you have in, in our do case? It, it was just it was a survey. But it went out. It went out to the entire. I don't even remember how many tens of thousands of people were in the community through our on the serve. Um, we also allowed them to do paper ballots um, when they were coming into uh, events at the school. Um, we left the collection open for probably about two weeks, um, and then we reflected up. And I think. People had come in to do the work on it, so they, of course they were going to vote on it. Uh, and I think, I think it was like 85 or 60 percent. I think that people are more likely to vote if they have something in front of them. Yeah. I think we'd get more participation, even more participation than a postcard where people have to come up with their own idea. Yeah. But if they can approve or not yeah. something that already exists, I think we'll get better. Um, we could do the voting at the uh, at the fall events at the schools. Um, you know, they have the back to school nights and things like that. That's interesting. You're right. just not going to get a, a broad collection. Could we community. put them at the library? Could we? That's why paper yeah. stuff. I think yeah. would um, get us beyond the the school community list serve. Yeah, I mean, uh, at the town, town offices. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But I think using the draft, I know you'd rather it go out final. Oh, no. But I, I need something to vote yeah. on. I am totally, I was hoping to have them printed and ready to go to be displayed at graduation. But the large scale printer that we ordered was backlogged and it didn't come on time. And, <laughs> and so anyways, that goal, I did not meet my, the timeline I had envisioned on that. So the idea of putting it out in the community really sounds good to me. The library, you know, other places in town that would host it, I think that's a great idea. And you, 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 your group did fabulous work. They're Thank really you. Good. And you know, all, many, many other, pe other people were involved. Yep. Um, and they did, the students did a really concerted effort. They were like, how can we reach the nursing home? How can we reach the library? You know, so there was, <coughs> The hardest part, I have to tell you, was reading everything that everyone wrote, yeah. right? Yes. Um, and there was a big call for swings <laughs> from the elementary grades. And so we are adding swings to Randolph Elementary School. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I think we need to do what we have and yeah. not like recreate the wheel. We could, we could just like keep kicking this can. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. You need to revise it. Right, so this brings up what do we want to use the July time for? Is mm. it to uh, kind of format how we're going to do this vote? Do we want the vote to happen before the school year starts? Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. So what do we want to use July for then? The logistics of this, it would seem we, we may need staff assistance, I would think, right? Printing. Oh yeah, folding. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm a good folder, but um. <laughs> they, um, the the staff are, are in and out. Um, we provide them with stipends. They come in. They do a lot of kind of curriculum work to get kind of catch up or revisions and things like that. There's quite a few of them that are going to be around. We're also running the summer programming for the recovery for students. Um, so there will be staff available, and depending upon how much time you need need for them, I mean, it's reasonable to expect them to get paid for it. We can try to come up with the money that you can give us the hours and the people you need to work on. Yeah. Back back to July. It <laughs> it seems like this group needs to get to do in July needs to do our work on what we think this should be what we think this evaluation process should be. And then at least once we're on the same page, then we can bring in Portrait of a Graduate community and, and make a more final version. Um, that's just my thinking. But. So what I'm hearing, correct me if I'm wrong, okay. is that we meet next month with this in front of us, with the draft in front of us, translate it into what we think the ends would be mm -hmm. using that information mm -hmm. put it out to a vote make sure people approve of it 
and then we have our ads. Is that what you said? I don't think so. I think I just translated it. I, I, I like else. the translation, though. I'm, I don't yeah, think that's, that's what you said. But I, <laughs> no, no, that's, but I like that's, that that's essentially what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So a relatively standard meeting with like two agenda items. Yeah, I don't like. I don't want to deal with all this, um, you know, uh, mechanics of the meeting. I want to just do the work. Like I want us to come and do the work rather than us. Like we're trying to do the work right now, but we realize, wait, that's not what we're supposed to be doing right now. We're supposed to be approving these. But I want us to like have that conversation mm -hmm. and get, get on the same page as to what. I don't know what. Like why do we serve on this board? Why do we? You know what changes to the school uh you know goals and, and how we communicate with wayne i don't think we haven't done that work so like i think we need like like real time to do that work mm -hmm. so like a retreat yeah okay so what i propose because i think it also can be dangerous to go into a meeting with too broad of mm -hmm. an agenda item even if the agenda is one item so I think we need a very clear jumping off point, which mm -hmm. knowing this group will tangent into everything. <laughs> um, and it's a public meeting, yeah. just a reminder. Yeah. Um, and you know, maybe we schedule for half a day or three hours or four hours or you know, more retreat-like than Than, than uh, our regular meeting. There's food. Like, and there's food that that I will provide. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm, that's kind of where my head's at, but maybe other people think differently and maybe they won't get staff and community involved right off. So that's just kind of problem. Okay, so in our regular rhythm of things, that would be July 14th. Um, but of course, our regular rhythm is also six to eight at night. Um, eight. Uh, so if we want to do a longer meeting, um, I think we all need to take out our calendars. I think it's July 12th, sorry. It is sorry, July thank 12th. You. Sorry. I'm out of town. So I know I am. Okay. Um, I also don't necessarily know if it needs to be four hours. Like, I, I think we just need to have it focused on that one item, in my opinion. I think we start with two hours. If, it, yeah. if we still have more work to do, we schedule another meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think um, that sounds good because after a couple hours, you just get like. You're correct. Yeah. 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 Over an hour. Yeah. Okay. Um, it sounds like we do have a vice chair conflict though on that particular date um so i'd like to see if we can i know summer's rough you know with yeah. people taking time and stuff like that um what about the following week is everyone available that would be the 19th of um, july out of town um are you out that whole week that, it, that it i'm gone monday tuesday wednesday and i come back on thursday yeah Okay, how do people feel about the 14th, which I originally said, but it's a Friday. I am You're available. out of town. You're available. This is nearly impossible. Um, when are you, what's up? Like moving at the 5th. Is that the Wednesday previous? Yep. Yeah. Okay, the 5th? I could do the 5th. Oh my God. The I could too. I can do the 5th. I'm open to the fifth. I could do the fifth. Oh, Rachel, yes. Yeah. July 5th? Or Alive. Talking during the evening. July 5th? We're talking at 6 I don't know. July 5th. July 5th? July 5th. Still talking. I'm bringing food. I'm personally <laughs> donating food. Yeah, I think mean, uh, we all just brought something. Yeah, okay. Let's do a potluck style. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys are really like whether the pressure it's on. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll bring the fire I'm, one. Never mind. I'm not available. <laughs> Hannah bringing the food. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not bringing the food. Figured this is you know we yeah. can do this. But um, could, could I? So I think we have a motion that we're going to change the meeting. Should I? I listen to it. 
What? The one that's on the calendar, yes, for July 12th. Well, we'll um, just have to warn that it's canceled the regular meeting, yeah. and we'll have to warn this is a special meeting. Fantastic. Whatever you want to call it. And the agenda item is ends discussion. Ends yes. discussion. Evaluation and discussion. And yeah. second read of those two policies. And thank you. Okay. And then it's as if yeah. we take the notes. The required one. Yeah. Oh, and the letter, right? We need our, our letter. We need to agree on that. And oh, yeah. the final draft of the letter yes. and getting it so out. So now you're getting Sorry. quite an agenda. <laughs> That's fine. If it's those three things, then fine. But no more. We don't want to talk about anything else. This is what happens, though. Like, we say that we're going to talk about one thing, and then there's like a whole agenda. Yeah. Right, but yeah. so you have to get me what we need for the agenda, and I'm going to have to warn it soon yep. because the so way like the two weeks. calendar is. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I will email you tomorrow. All right. So, <clears throat> do we need a motion here? Uh, no. No. Okay. No. We we'll just warn the other meeting is canceled. Okay. The regular Where meeting, the twelfth. Six p.m. Six p.m. Location. Well, where would it be? Um, June. Oh, it would be the next Thursday, right? Can we just do it at the media center? Yeah. I, I don't know. At the high school? Probably. Yeah, we could check. If it's a special meeting, we don't have to follow the. Right. Yeah. So you think the media center? I'll check and see if you can. No, they, don't, they don't usually do the cleanup in that area. I know. I would say either media or the or the elementary school library. Okay. Right. The other thing is time. Six. Six. Six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Six to eight. eight. We could also do the the tech center career uh, college just one of those three places. <laughs> Whatever. Media oh, center yeah. or fishbowl. Yeah. We can all fit it. Um, yeah. Just. Um, what do you want me to put on it? Because it's a special meeting. I'm going to have to warn this because the yeah. paper will be next, have to be next Thursday's paper in order to be for July 5th. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, I'm pushing so a bit. agenda with public comment because we always have. No, I won't put the that. whole agenda. It would be yeah. special meeting regarding what? Ends and discussion. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then the regular agenda we'll have to put out yes. anyway. Yeah. Got it. Go to the front offices. There's two. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. One more right. Okay, great. <clears throat> uh, quarterly facilities report. So you have a copy of that and happy answering questions that you have. The highlighted portions that are on there are the uh, major items are that are either yeah, yeah. currently being worked on or have recently been completed. Uh, the biggest things to be aware of, and this will be in the consent agenda, uh, are the reserve fund requests. Um, one of the major ones is to put the generator in an RES. It is the last school that does not have a generator. Um, and we've been working on that twofold. Um, one, because we've been getting a lot of outages, um, especially Randolph's been getting tired. You saw it up here, now it's, it's been Randolph the last couple of years. But it's also to make sure that each of the schools is an emergency site so that if they have to evacuate folks, these are the places they can come and they've got their heat, they've got their water, they've got what they need to be able to, to, to help folks. Um, in addition, one of the other reserve requests that you are going to see is um, to redo the paving around this building. I have one question. Yeah, go ahead. Because we're doing that, we're picking it kind of an emergency site. Does the state give us any extra money? No, we actually we actually we actually um, we actually end up doing doing more work, which is fine. Uh, there's a, the ramen crew um, as well as the emergency manager that oversees the three towns will come in and has actually already been working with our facilities uh, crews to start to set up you know processes and procedures and where the emergency equipment should be stored and you know if you got to transport people, how can we share um, <coughs> things? So that process is. So good question. 
Um, the Brookfield paving is is around uh, the building here, so that that'll be seventy two thousand. The RES gener generator it will be two hundred and thirty seven thousand. Um, it's a big bill. Um, we tried to do it earlier, but during COVID, we just couldn't find a unit. They weren't building units big enough to be able to, to supply that. And then one of the pieces that we'll talk a little bit about in the real estate section, in the executive session, is the easement uh, for RTCC, that little road that runs by the eight frame house. Um, been doing some talk with uh, both the owner as well as his legal counsel. You have the right to maintain it. Um, we used to think that, you know, he had to be in agreement about certain things to be able to do work on that road. Um, we are always allowed to bring it back up to a previous state. And so we went out and we talked with him. We said, hey, we can just do this, but we know that that previous state didn't make you happy. We're willing to do extra work to make you happy and to help with the water flow and stuff. This is what it looks like, but for that, you're going to have to agree to it. Um, and so that way we'll be able to finally get back to that road repaired. Why are we keeping that road? Just curious. What's that? Like, what's the... It's the primary exit that the tech center uses at the end of the day so that we're not commingling the traffic that's picking up the, the high school students and the, the tech center students at the same time. There are a lot of cars and there are a lot of buses uh, to go out one entrance. And so the tech center pretty much exits out there at the end of the day out the Louisiana Road and then High school does the regular loop that everybody's familiar with. Why does the tech center not release either earlier or later than the high school? Uh, a lot of it is controlled by when their buses are, are available. Um, the, one of the reasons that they start later is because most of the, the schools contract out with busing companies. And so they don't have enough buses to go around, so they actually do two runs. They do their first run in the morning to get all the kids to school, and then the second run is bringing the kids out. So it's, it's kind of the time. And at the, end, at the end of the day, they're picking the kids back up again? Uh, at the end of the day, they pick the kids back up again. And then again, their timing is controlled by picking up their regular students within their district and then also their extracurriculars to come afterwards. So it gets, it gets to be a pretty tight schedule, especially after school. So yeah, the easiest thing to do is to be happy to, to, to start the different. Um, but well, that's uh, the easement piece. There's a lot of discussion to have about that. Um, and, and since that's a real estate piece, the potential real estate um, purchase or dissolution, that's something we should talk about in the executive session. So those are, those are the biggies. Any questions on the facilities report? Uh, yeah, real quick, just on the generator, 236.5. Did we only get a bid from Harmony? No, by law, anything that's over 40,000, we have to go out to bid. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thanks. Um, we use Harmony, they tend to come in <coughs> um, in terms of when we get three bids, uh, but we've worked with them extensively. They've done exception. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I just. No, good, it's good to be a record. But yeah, no, anything over 40,000 has to go out to bid. Uh, we got to get three, uh, three folks to give us a proposal. That's in our policy. Yeah. State law. Yeah. 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 Great. Um, moving on to policy decisions. Uh, the second review, hopefully a vote to approve EL 2.7, compensation and benefits. Any questions or comments? before entertaining a motion. Great. I'll entertain. I'll move to approve 2.7 compensation and benefits as in our packet. I second. Sarah seconds. Further discussion? All those uh, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Excellent, passes unanimously. Um, we had a couple of first reviews, uh, F3 fire and emergency preparedness drills, and F4 access control and visitor management. Lane, did you want to? Yeah, these were, um, so we had that, what they call the swatting incident that happened this year. That was when the folks were calling in um, to multiple schools and the police departments said there were active shooters going on in the park. 
Um, and so the legislature got very concerned about that. Um, and so they passed uh, a bill uh, that required these two policies. One of them is the fire and emergency preparedness, and stuff that we already do, making sure that we're doing our drills uh, and following the protocols for that. Um, the other one is about um, access and control, and that's uh, making sure that we've got restrictions on who can come into buildings during the school day, and that anybody that comes in is signing in so that we're tracking you know, who's in and who's out. Um, so that's what those two are about. Um, the only quirky thing that comes out of it that's going to require a significant amount of work uh, is that uh, as part of the legislation, it requires the district to have what's called an all hazards emergency plan. So if you're under a nuclear attack, if there's a flood, if there's a, what are you going to do? Uh, we actually have one, uh, but it's dated and it would be time to update it. So there's some significant work that needs to be done. Uh, so we're kind of in compliance, but we really should be updating. The policies, and that's what we we're talking about a little bit earlier, both of these um, by law have to be in place by August 1st, and that's the reason for the, the special meeting. Okay. okay, first read, we'll see those again. Legislative update. So a lot of that was in my um, Super typo filled superintendent's <laughs> report. I apologize about that, that was a tired thing. But the, the biggest pieces I think that are probably on folks' mind, the first one was universal free meals. Uh, that was actually tied to the state budget. And so when the governor rejected the state budget, that meant that the universal free meals got rejected as well. And so I know supposedly they started yesterday with a veto session. Um, so I have not heard anything about what's coming out of that. Uh, and then the other piece that we already talked about that, that impacted us was the school safety measures and the policies. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the consent agenda. Um, I believe we can do these in one, but I do need to slightly edit um, the arbitrage. Am I doing this right, Linda? Yeah. Um, if we can just add that you all um where's my either approve. Well, yeah authorize me to sign on behalf of the board and the bank loan stuff okay <laughs> what are you signing the the, the all the tax the, the, the arbitrage loan. uh because the the state does not give us the tax money to run the school until two or three months after the school year opens, we have to borrow money. Every district in the state has to do it, so that's the parents. And so this would be allowing you know, Hannah to just sign off on engaging us in that loan. The loan is for three and a quarter percent, but we are allowed to invest the money on a four percent. So we can do this in one shot. I'll entertain a motion with that edit, please, so that it makes it into the minutes. So moved. Great. Second around. Sam seconds. Uh, further discussion? Great. All those in favor? Consent agenda with edit. Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. All right. Uh, Lane, your superintendent's report. I know you just hit on the legislative part. Yep. Um, did you want to talk more or uh, take questions? I think I have a couple here. We can do uh, either or. We, uh, the financial report's in there. Um, I do have a presentation on the school climate survey um, from the staff. Um, but I'm going to recommend because it will probably take about an hour to go through and look at that we can either do it or you can take it. Um, so I'll leave that, that decision up to you. In terms of the financials, um, we are in good shape. Um, as the grant money is drying up post-COVID, our surpluses at the end of the year are going to go down. Um, our current surplus at the end of this fiscal year, which the last day is June 30th of, uh, is $785,000. So we are well in the black. So we can do what we need to do. 
I have a quick question. Um, the advisory panel for each school, uh, populated by community members, and give honest people, who, how, how was that formed? Who, got, who gets to be on those? So it depended upon the, the it depended upon the school, and it might be best to have the principal talk about that. Great. Uh, we did talk about them actually posting on the new website when it comes up who their advisory councils are. Um, in some cases, it was through a vote. If they had a lot of people that was interested, uh, if they didn't have people that were interested, it was through a lot of arguments. <laughs> um, but they had uh, a pretty good crew um at the schools and the purpose of it is just what it says it's kind of getting people together these are the problems we're facing in the school this is the work that we need to do what's the best way to do it? get all those ideas on the table. and they form it at the beginning of the they form it at the beginning year. of the year yeah that was a part of the engagement piece that was one of the visions for this year was the engagement trying to get people because that's what, I, what we kind of talked about We've been encountering that kind of blockade and trying to get some of the work done in some of the schools. And so this was a way to try to get more people talking about stuff in a different format to hopefully get things moving forward. So I'd love for us to consider, we had talked about having um, principals come in and, and talk to us. So I think we you know, can schedule when maybe September, October, November, yeah. December, and have them come in and have that be one of the- yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Cool. Can I ask a question about the climate and exit surveys? I know that um, from what I'm hearing, there was a, a climate survey that you sent out to um, uh, students and families, it sounds like. And then there was a climate survey that the union sent out to staff. Um, and the exit survey, I'm assuming, is the one that's included in our packet. Will we have... Um, Will the board be privy to the information that was collected in those surveys? Yeah, uh, I've got the I've got my climate survey that's here today. There are legal implications about the survey that the union did, um, which is probably better to talk about in executive session. I'm happy to do that. Uh, what was the other question? The exit surveys. Uh, the exit surveys, um, I don't maybe I didn't send them to her, but maybe I just sent them to Chelsea and Karen. Um, the information in them is was is in one of the reports that we kind of looked at. That's why it was blacked out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to give you whatever you want. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Other questions on the superintendent's report, the financials? Oh, good. Really good. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go over some action items here. Please, by Monday at noon, send Chelsea any thoughts, edits, um, revisions, uh, deletions um, you have for the uh, letter to the community. I'll go ahead and email those to her. Uh, action. I'm going to connect with Linda about the agenda for our July 5th meeting, six to eight, snacks included. Um, so please do be thinking about the ends this entire time. Uh, do, do, do. I think what, that's it for, uh, and um, Chelsea, you're gonna go ahead and, and engage the VSBA for the evaluation yes. process. Contact VSBA to set up the contract. Timeline, awesome. process, time commitment. Great. Anything else that you want to know about that? The only agenda is the committee for the event. Let's see. I know yeah, it's uh, happening. I'm sorry. Well, staff survey that was sent to the entire board on June 12th. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we I got both of those. Yeah. I'm happy to send it again if you need it. That was the union one? That was my, that was the one that, that I ran based upon uh, AOE. You said June 12th? And I'm happy to send it There's a staff one and a student one that came from the lane, right? Oh, yeah. No. yeah. And, and the, the union student, one, student we don't have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the union one. No, I think both. And that was raw. Yeah, um, this one it, I saw. Cause I heard something. Yeah. Okay, um, so 
having made it through our agenda, I will entertain a motion to enter executive session at 7.5. I make a motion to enter executive session. Any to discuss personnel, personnel and State real estate and student and student and student. And student. Any invitations? Do you second. Um, I think. Yeah, all of us. Except. Yeah, I'm going to be leaving, and I so, want to tell you all I am retiring at the end of June. And Sue is going to take my place. Welcome, Sue. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we should have done an introduction. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. Then. Who seconded it? Who seconded the motion? I did. Okay. Thanks, Megan. But I do not quite believe that. Okay. I think we're back now. Okay. Hang on. Yes. Can we? We have something for you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't necessary. <laughs> it was. Oh, but you it are was. an invaluable asset to this board. I know, seriously. <laughs> I'll be around. Sue and, and I got again. Sue and I got some work to do. Sorry to cry today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just begun. Very hard to wrap. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Should I do this yeah, now? Yeah. Or oh, yeah. Wait. You guys have had a long night. There's here. a wood thing. What's that? There's a wood thing. Oh my God. I'm going paddling. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you very much, you guys. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. My daughter was in the same Finger Lake, so I hope to be able to do that. Oh, yes. Yes. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you very Linda. much. Thank you. That's perfect. Cornell, New York. Yeah, yeah. She works close to Cornell, not at Cornell. <laughs> anyway, thank you all. I miss you all. Yeah, thank you, Linda, we will for miss you, you too. Yeah.